Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to BWTM Sports and also welcome to Round for Round Boxing, the new boxing game that's in development. Check it out, www.roundforroundboxing.com. BWTM Sports being the official channel for all things Round for Round. We have with us in the room a very special guest, super middleweight champion of the world, the IBF, Jeff Left Hook Lacey. How's it Jeff, going, how are we doing, chap? I'm great. How about yourself? Let's get this volume fired up. And also, we have with us in the room tonight our co-host for the show, Adrian. Adrian, how are we doing? We're doing great. Glad to be here. Fantastic. Uh, Adrian, if you just want to give people a quick overview to who you are very quickly before we pass it over to Jeff. Okay. Well, I've done a lot of... Uh... YouTube uh, videos with the boxing community. I have been into boxing since I was 11 years old. And as you know, I follow it diligently. Uh, and I'm just here basically to kind of watch what you're doing. I can't go into <laughs> to watch what you're doing and, and come in when I have some questions for Jeff. I sound um, Yeah. <laughs> Okay, great stuff. So, without further ado, thank you for that, Adrian. Um, without further ado, we move over to Jeff Lacey. Jeff, how are you doing, champ? I'm great. How are you guys doing? Good. Awesome. I'm ready to go. Um, but Jeff, uh, for, for people who don't know who you are, again, I'd be surprised if people don't know who you are. Can you let people know just who you are, Jeff, and... Uh, it's just a brief overview as to who you are and what you've done in your career. Well, um, I'm my ring name, Jeff Left Hook Lacey, as a lot of on you know, boxing websites, so a lot of people understand who I am. Um, I started fighting at the age of seven. Um, I progress, and a lot of people from the hometown was was excited, and you know. Um, I st I started telling lots of people around my around my hood around the hood in the south of St. Petersburg that I was going to make that Olympic team. I'll say right around the age of 13, 14 years old, I was starting to tell them and you know they was like, "Oh man, that'll be awesome. That'll be awesome." But you know they they didn't they didn't think I was ever going to make it. You know, I wouldn't say ever, but you know they just listened to the words. But mm -hmm. then when I made that Olympic team, I saw, I saw the look on a lot, a lot of people's faces. Like, oh my God, he really did it! Like, I'm like, what do you mean? And it made me think. Like, you didn't believe me when I told you when I was 13, 14 years old. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's I, I set it in motion all my life. I wanted to make that Olympic team, and I did. And in my style, it was like, man, your style is not suited. I was a puncher. I'm like, man, listen, if you knock everybody out, they can't take the fight. I mean, people getting robbed. People getting robbed in fights, so they win. So mm -hmm. if I knock them out, I, I'm a winner. That's what I did. I, I kid you not. I was knocking people out in the amateurs. So, I mean, then one thing and then went to another. After that, I started my professional career. We captured two world titles: the IBF and the IBF and the, um, IBO world titles. And I defended those successfully uh, four times, three times. And, you know, I mean, I, I solidified my career in the end. Retired in 2014. And now um, I sit back and enjoy, enjoy the rest of life. Okay. When did you, when did you discover that you were a puncher? And, what, and when did you discover it was your left hook? That all your power is in. Well, I discovered I was a, I had because I I was the middle child of nine, so wow. um, and I I think by me getting involved with boxing at a very young age, it stunt my growth because all my brothers all my brothers are over six foot and over two hundred pounds, so um, I had to I had to let them know I was I was I was there. Because, you know, me messing around with my brothers and fighting, play fighting around the house, uh, I wanted to let them know that they just can't play with me. So 
And that's where it came from. And then doing a live interview. Um, we um we were, we took it to well, another level. I I I started getting I started getting to the point where I was like, man, I can make it out of the ghetto. I can actually make it out of the ghetto if I keep fighting and showing people that I can fight. And one thing led to another. I started telling people around the age of 12, 13, man, I want to go to the Olympics. I want to go to the Olympics. And um, one thing led to another. And, and with all the doubters that that I was going to ever make it, that, that 2000 U.S. Olympic team, I was one of the members. So, I mean, it's, I mean, it was a lot of hard work. It was a lot of hard work, but the mental mental work was much more harder than the physical. The physical part of it was easy because I was a, a fighter. I, I grew up fighting at the age of seven. So by the time I made that Olympic team, I was 20, 21. So it was all downhill from there with the physical aspect of, of fighting. You there? I'm sorry, I'm here. I just had a phone call. I didn't want to take it in here. Okay. Um, and you know, Jeff, when you were seven, what is is it because of your brothers being bigger than you were that you decided to fight? Well, no, it was it was this the honest God truth. The reason why I wanted to fight is because I was the middle child and I wasn't getting my own attention. Okay. That's all it was. I was the middle child, and you know, I wasn't getting the attention the attention that I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, the way I saw, you still that? Yeah, the way, the way I saw my older brothers getting it, and my younger mm -hmm. brothers and sisters. You know, um, by being the middle child, I didn't get you know, I, I didn't get the attention that I was wanting because I knew I had something about me that was that was different. Right. I wanted I wanted to show. I wanted to show what I was capable of doing, even though I was the smallest. Mm -hmm. And then, you know what? That's really hard to do at that age to be dedicated to fighting like that, especially at that age. It's well, funny you, you say that. It's you funny you say that. Bigger than you. It's funny you say that because when you're actually there, you don't you don't see it from that point of view. It's so right. much force. It's so much force of proving yourself proving yourself proving yourself to the bigger and 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 making that making yourself making putting yourself under that attention that's mm -hmm. what i wanted I, I i thrived that attention and and i i tried basketball and ain't the only time you got the attention when you had the ball and mm -hmm. when i wanted the ball i couldn't get the ball because i wasn't in place so i realized the team sports did on its god truth I didn't. I didn't like the team sports because I wanted my attention. I would have. I would have been. I, m being at home with my with my family, I was already in a team. I didn't want to know. I didn't want no team. I wanted. I wanted to be. I wanted to be under the light. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be under the light in a smaller team, and yeah. that's what it was for me. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, that that that's uh you know, I I have a question for you that I like yes. to ask fighters. Yes. What do you think is more important, your mind frame? I know your body has to be in shape. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to your mind frame, how do you keep that uh, fear from coming in? Well. One, if you if you don't have if you if you if you can't think about it, if you can't think you can do it, you have, you're not gonna do it. I'm sorry. That so that is number one. Mm -hmm. I mean, and and if this is the, I'm, I'm gonna tell you from the way I felt it. I realized first I wanted to just box. I just wanted to box, and then when I realized how difficult it was, I'm a bull. I'm a Taurus. I don't shy away from anything. I, I I'm, I'm stubborn. You know, don't take the stubborn way. You know, the way people think is as a negative. No, I'm stubborn to stop it. I'll hurt myself before I stop. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the person I am still today. 
I mean, that bull is never going to come out of me. I yeah. will hurt myself. I will hurt myself before I stop. It could be a steel wall. If I put my, if that steel wall get my focus, is in for. I mean, it's 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 in for a long night because well, that's, you know, that's the way I am. But that's the way Tauruses are. I'm a Taurus too. Yeah, yeah. So it's exactly. you know, so someone someone can't tell you when someone no. says, "Well, you can't do this." Your your attitude is, "Oh yeah, I can." Yeah. I'll yeah see, to be honest, when they tell you you can't, that's when we really focus on it. That's Whatever right. We that's focus right. on. I don't care what it is. If we if if we get a focus on it. You may be, you may not be in distance, but I remember you. Oh, I remember you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna run into you. I'm gonna run into you. I'm gonna deal with you later. But you know, do you have this thing about you too? Um, from a distance, a person can say whatever they want. A person can say whatever. Now I'm, I'm cool, calm, and collected. Now I can still go do about my thing. But I got one eye on you, watching you to see how close you're gonna get to me mm -hmm. you know, before you get to me. But if I get up off the couch. Okay, it's it's a heat. But if you get my attention and get me off the couch, okay, now you got my focus. You, right, right. You know, because you know how a lot of people just talk, talk, talk. Listen, I'll let you talk until you get close enough. And once mm -hmm. you get close enough and you get my attention, I, I feel threatened. That's when it's 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 hard to back a bull down. That's yeah, the stubborn part of the bull. Yeah, we got to go all the way. We have to go all the way. That's true. Wow. Jeff, um, yes. let's talk a little bit more about your career. So you were going through your career and you were knocking people out brutally. People were getting knocked out. That left hook was famous. It was your trademark. Yes. And when you were going through that point in time, there were there was lots of talk at that time where people compare you to young Mike Tyson, the way you were wrecking through the division. Yes. When that was going on, did you fall into that hype uh, of, of being that young Mike Tyson? Did you believe you were that young Mike Tyson? Or was to that be you? honest, I'm glad. I'm glad this, you're the first interview that ever interviewer that ever asked my opinion on this whole thing with Mike Tyson and the you know what I'm saying just, this whole look like. I didn't like it. I never. I never liked the fact that they was saying I was like a Mike Tyson, and because the re this is the reason why I didn't like it. Watching Mike Tyson, I realized. Mike Tyson was, was had the attitude. I have that attitude that I connect with that. I can see where people could connect that with 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 me. Other than you know what I'm saying, outside of being that person he is outside of the ring. I'm that person inside of the ring. But what I didn't what I didn't like about what I didn't like about Mike Tyson, his training regimen. He I mean the way I mean let me let me let me really get this very clear. His training regimen. I know he trained hard, but what I saw in his fights, if you could get Mike Tyson past the fourth, fifth, into the later deeper water, you could beat him. That's what I didn't like when everybody was saying you're just like another Mike Tyson. I'm like, you don't. You, it it even pissed me off just to even talk about it now. I mean, because I never wanted I I didn't choose that name. The mm -hmm. public choose that name, and mm -hmm. then when when uh people would would say after the Kawasaki fight, oh yeah, he's he he's he's not well yeah, this then he's not that Mike Tyson. I'm like I never called myself Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. I never called myself Mike Tyson one, and and I never did like it. I never did like people was thinking that I was Mike Tyson because this is the reason why. I realized Mike Tyson was a good front runner. If you can get him past the fifth round, you can beat him. I showed where I kept my power, not only in the in the me knocking people out in the first couple rounds. I also started knocking people out in the eighth, ninth, in the eighth and ninth round where I I my my strength stayed because I worked that hard. To freaking, you know, um, I work hard. I work very hard in the, in the gym. Any of my trainers could, that I've that I've trained with, they used to have to tell me on Sunday, Jeff, relax, relax, because I mean, if if I was feeling good, I I couldn't stay in one spot. I had to go do something. 
Mm. And my trainers, my trainers used to be like, man, Jeff, 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 relax. You work hard this week. I'm like, coach, man, I feel good. I feel good. And that's the thing. The difference between Mike Tyson and me, I work my muscle past tired to a point where I broke myself down to when I'm tired. Most people stop when they get tired. I worked myself until I got tired and saw how to go through it. And that's why I stayed consistent. Mm. I stayed consistent by going doing it that way. I didn't just work until I was tired and then I laid down. Most fighters freaking do that. And, you know, that's that's what I saw with Mike Tyson. And that's what I didn't like. That's what I didn't want people to know about me. I'm like, listen, no, no. I mean, I, I, I get pissed about that right now. I mean, I'm, I'm pissed just talking about it. I didn't I didn't like it because I'm like, man, I'm not Mike Tyson. I'm Jeff. I'm Jeff. And I'm not, I mean, I, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you as the rounds go, the deeper water you go take me to, I want you to think that, you know what I'm saying, I'm just that puncher. I want you to think that so I can get you in, the, in that, get you in that deeper water and I'm going to drown you. That's how I felt. Wow. I can understand that for sure. I can understand that you want to be known as who you are. And, and, and a lot of times right now we're getting a lot of uh, fighters that are being compared to other fighters. Yes. Which is not necessarily true because no two fighters are alike. Period. You know, it's it, what I'm seeing is, is a lot of what you, what you just, what, what you just spoke about. But it, it I, I saw, I saw towards the end of my career, I saw where it became, it, the sport of boxing became a promoter, a promoter and manager uh, position more than it was the fighter. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not here to talk bad about any of the up and coming fighters or the fighters that's out there now, but these fighters, they're after the money. They're not after the hard work first. I realize to get the money, I got to do the hard work. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're, freaking, they're freaking putting down, you know, towels to walk over to spill water. And they're pampered. And they are pampered. It's blown right. up. It's mm -hmm. A lot of it's blown up. I mean, these guys are not fighting. You know, th this is the biggest thing that I, th I want to say about this boxing sport. I can honestly say to this day, me being retired, I never pass my torch to that next up and coming fighter like I got it. Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 the former champions have been manipulated out of the position. Mm -hmm. They've been manipulated. These, these, these new, these, this new era of fighters, they didn't, they didn't become the world titleist by beating former world champions. Right. Do you think it's because they are really, cons most of those people who write and talk about these fighters are more concerned about, I get the impression that people are so concerned about pleasing the fighter and not actually telling the fighter uh, the truth, in, in other words. You know I, how, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I'm sorry, sorry to cut you off, sorry. No, no, that's okay. I, I think a little bit different. Um, I think it's not, it's, it's not really about the fighter. And, and it's not really about the fighter. It's about, it's about the promoter. It's about the promoter and how to fill his pockets. I mean, hmm. this is this is. I mean, to be honest, a lot of a lot of these. I mean, they don't want me to expose the truth. And and seriously, me being in the position that I am, and and me telling you the way. Yeah, I'm you don't want to go about, into that. No, about, don't, the, about me. They are really. Con no, I mean, I was going to say you don't. I, I understand 
I understand why you wouldn't want to go into that. I do yeah. understand that. Uh, I have a question though. Well, first, let me say this. I think there is definitely a difference between uh, the way that the old school fighters fought and then what we have today. Yes. Um, and I do understand that a lot of fighters now are fighting for money. Yes. Not necessarily the titles. Yes. Um, let me ask you this. What made you decide to come back? <clears throat> frustration. Frustration of what I'm seeing on television. Mm. The frustration. I mean, if, if, I mean, it would be worse. It would be, I, I'm going to tell you God on the truth. It would be worse for me right now to see what I see in boxing and I was I had I had to leave injured you know what I'm saying I, I, I can't I can't get up for it anymore it would be worse for me because I would I would be oh that's why I, I I feel I feel I need to come back because the fans are the fans are being robbed these, I mean, if, if you, I mean, if I'm speaking from. This is not something that I'm that I'm coming up with. This is who I who I've always been. You know, I'm gonna tell you something about what I realize, and the reason why my fans love me, and still today, my fans love me because this is what I saw. This is this is how I fought. This is how I fought. I fought the fights. In my fights, I fought fights that my body went into the ring and I sat down ringside and I wanted to see this guy fight. And, and that, that's the way I watched the old, you know, with my dad when he was fighting. That's the way I watched, you know, the legends. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, you ever watch football and you say, man, how come he went that way, this way, and then go that way? <laughs> that, that other way was wide open. Right. That's how, that's how I watched boxing. That's how I went in there and fought. Whatever people wanted to see, I mm -hmm. was not afraid. I was not afraid to, one, fight anybody. I was not afraid, two, to dish it out. I was mm -hmm. not afraid to stand under the fire and give someone, because I was the middle child. I needed attention. Mm -hmm. I wanted attention. So that's where my fight my fight pedigree came from. I was never afraid. I don't care where you was from. I don't care what I had to do. I don't mm -hmm. care. Fighting is fighting. Fighting That's is right. fighting. I don't care. If, if you got a gun, then hey, man, man I, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I don't want to do that. But you you have officers that, that that's what they do. But, mm -hmm. you know, that, I'm not an officer. I'm a fighter. So I come to produce what the fans want to see, and mainly, mainly, what I like watching. Mm -hmm. I always produce in that ring what I like watching on television. I will now, fight. I like the I fact that you don't let people dictate to you what to do. That's impressive. The, That's you, impressive. You will know that by the I know. Tourist. I know. No one's going to tell you. You know, cause you know what it is about a tourist? You know what it is about us? We, we, we'll we sit there and watch something from a distance and we'll see somebody else do it and we'll say, man, just like I was telling you about, man, how come he ain't going that hole? And why come he ran up there? Man, come mm -hmm. on, why, you know, open up your angles. You know what I'm saying? Open up your mind to go different angles. Don't just go, because you look like you're only going to fall down anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm trying, when, when we go about something, we trying to do it all the way. We ain't doing uh -huh. it just for a couple of yards. I'm trying to make it to the end zone. Put that ball in my hand. You put that ball or that tension over my head. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give the fans. I'm gonna give what I like seeing at my best. That's what I've always done in that ring. I went in the ring and fought my best fight that I like to see on television. Mm -hmm. And you know that's what I meant when I was asking about. Uh, the the uh, mental part of fighting because again you know people think they can look at a fighter and say oh you know he's he's ready you know he's got the six pack he's got this yeah. he got that but if his mind is not right yeah. it's not going to work period yeah 
I mean, you can look the part, but if your mind is not right, you're not gonna. You know I mean, listen. One thing I one thing I learned about boxing. If I said I was gonna have some difficulty, that's exactly what happened. Mm-hmm. That's exactly. But but we we know there's gonna be difficult times in boxing, no matter what, because there's two mm-hmm. people in there that want to win. That's and they're right. trained to come in there. So there is going to be difficulty. But as soon as you think about it that way, then you're like, man, yeah, man, I knew it was going to be some difficulty. I, mean, I mean, seriously, even when I was 100%, there was going to be difficulty. The mm-hmm. difficulty is going to be there no matter what. Yeah. It's going to be there. And, and you know, just some people just focus on whatever they focus on. You know, the, I've, I've had injuries in fights where I focus on winning. Mm-hmm. I focus on winning more than I looked at the injury or felt the injury. I right. focus on winning, and I did. Jeff, yes. question. Yes. Do you think that your your heart and your determination and your guts and, and, and the willingness to fight may have been possibly to your own detriment because, like, for example, because you want to fight and you're willing to fight, then... For example, promoters would put you in fights that either you weren't ready for, or yeah. you could have you could have had a bit more time to prepare for, and you could have had three or four more fights before you went and fought certain people. Do you think that had you been less of that, you would have had more time to prepare for the biggest fights of your career? You know, that's a great question, and I'm <laughs> glad you asked that question because <laughs> because this Kawasaki fight that you didn't say, but we. Well, that's what I'm going to talk about. Um, I realize, you know, I mean, some things we learn with experience and Mm -hmm. certain things we learn after going through the fire. Mm -hmm. And we, and, and that's being that I went through the fire. The questions came to my mind after it was over with. I couldn't do nothing about it then. Mm -hmm. I couldn't, I couldn't seriously, I would say about around, the fifth, sixth round of that fight with Joe Kawasaki, I realized, man, I wish I can just push a timeout and say timeout because I'm not ready for this yet. Mm. And that's when I realized, man, I'm just going to say it. That's when I realized the people, my handlers, they was there to collect the money. I was about to say something there, but I'll let you say it because um, to me, it looked to me from the outside looking in. Now, the fight you had before that was against Robin Reed, if I remember rightly. Yes. That's when I first started watching you because when you fought Robin Reed and you stopped Robin Reed, I was like, dang. Because I I wasn't, to be honest, I wasn't a believer in Jeff Lacey until you stopped Robin Reed because Robin Reed hadn't been stopped. You stopped him. You were the first man. Robin Reed down. Dang, this guy can fight. This mm-hmm. guy can punch. Mm-hmm. So you know, go ahead. I I want to say this about the preparation. I mean, I've never I've never said this, and maybe I probably shouldn't just because it's gonna. It, it, I'm I'm worried about people thinking oh, I'm making a, I'm making an excuse. Um, but I'll just say. It. In that fight, in that fight with me prep getting ready for that Kawasaki fight. In the gym sparring one day, I felt I felt something happen to my left shoulder. And mark me, I'm a boy and we're we're strong. We'll I'm wish I wish I would have said this before I brought this story up. As a bull. We will hurt ourselves. We 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 don't fear anything. If we focus on something, we don't we don't care how big it is. We don't care what we got to do. We're gonna we're gonna we will rather we will rather touch it than not touch it. And and if we don't touch it, it's because everybody said it was dangerous. we that's the stubborn side of a bull. We don't we don't go with what everybody else thinks. I'm different. I'm special. And that, and by me saying what I'm about to say, 
in that Kawasaki training camp, I was sparring and I felt this sharp pain come through to my left shoulder. And I, my toughness pushed it out. My toughness, and I was, I, I immediately connected with, man, after I threw it a couple more times, I'm like, man, the devil trying to stop me from freaking, I know I can beat Joe. I know I can beat Joe. Mm-hmm. And the and 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 the devil was trying to you know anything that's you know I've gone through so many things in my boxing career in my life where the devil always showed up and I was happy because if the devil didn't show up maybe I was going the wrong path. Mm-hmm. So when I realized that happened to me in in that training camp, I said, nah, the devil, the devil trying to stop me, mm-hmm. the devil trying to stop me. So what I did was I took a couple weeks off in that training camp. I didn't go, I didn't want to go see no doctor because I didn't want a doctor to tell me, Jeff, I, I was I was fear of if I did something that was gonna hurt it because I felt that I could still use it. I could still move it. It wasn't it wasn't to a point where I couldn't I couldn't throw the punch or I just didn't know what, what happened behind the flesh. Mm. And because I didn't know what happened behind the flesh. I say, you know what? It, this just another situation where, where um, the devil's trying to stop me from from letting me walk under this freaking bright light that 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 I'm trying to get to. So I pushed. I took two weeks off in that training camp. Dan Birmingham will tell you. Keith Stewart will tell you. The, my strength trainer. They'll tell you. I. They, they'll tell you. I took. I had to take that. Just so you know, I'm telling you, this is the God on His truth. I took two weeks off in that training camp, thinking that man, I just needed. I'm, I'm because I I was fighting so consistent, and mm-hmm. I was thinking, man, I probably need to rest a little bit. So I took two weeks off in the, in that training camp, and I came back, and I really I pushed I pushed the problem that I had back in the back of my head, and I said, you know what, it's the devil, it's the devil trying to stop me. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna agree to the devil. I'm a bull. I'm not going to agree to what the devil is trying to get me to do. So as a Taurus, as you will understand this, as as two Taurus, we, we, if we're focused on something, we're going to hurt ourselves. We're going to hurt ourselves to get it done. Mm-hmm. We will hurt ourselves because we're not going to turn back. We're not going to give up. I'm sorry. I'm yes, sorry. Sir. That's very true. It, very we're true. not gonna give up, and and that's what I realized. And 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 watching that fight with Kawasaki, uh, I posted about it recently, and I said, "Man, I came and watched. I came and watched the fight because I see somebody take over my body, and I'm like, man, um, that's not me. That's not Jeff. That's not. Mm-hmm. That's not. That's not Jeff. I mean, and, and me watching it, I'm like, man, that's not me. And I realized this is when. I look at my handlers that should have been there to say, Jeff, no, man, let's not fight this fight. Let's not fight this fight now. Let's, 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 like, like you hear all the time, uh, a, a fighter got injured in training camp. We had to postpone it. That's what I was looking, not, not that I was looking for, but, that's need- what would that's what you would have heard. That's what you would have heard should should I had a team that was looking out for my best interests. Mm-hmm. And that's what I wanna that's what I wanna say about that part of my career. But I that still, still to this day, I I I gain I gain I gain so much by losing and not giving up. Mm-hmm. Do you think, you know, because, go ahead. Do you think, I mean, in, 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 coming into that fight, now, what the media was saying, I'm going to go back to that Mike Tyson thing. You were coming to, quite similar to, like, Gerald McLennan. You were coming in like this, you know, wrecking machine coming to the UK. You just knocked out uh, Robin Reed. You won a knockout run. You got into this fight against... Um, you were always fight against Joe Kazaki. You were odds on to win. You you were you were even it was like ridiculous. The bookie yes. stopped making money 
because they believe that you were so you were going to destroy Joe Kazaki. In fact, people were saying they didn't think Joe Kazaki was going to get the first couple of rounds. That's how ferocious you were. Yeah, yeah. Did you believe in your own hype? Or no. did or, or was it and, and secondly, did you have control of your career? This is what happened. I'm gonna tell you the, the truth. It was a stage, it was a stage that was bigger than what I ever dealt with. So mentally I just went with it. And when you just said when you just said the anger side, mm. I took anger. I let the anger drive me and it was it was it was getting to me instead of me staying humble and and going about my my natural walk. Mm. So basically this is this is what upset me. I let his fans get under my skin. That's the first thing that I realized because they didn't know who I was, but they were saying things that they don't know, they couldn't possibly know about me. And I started letting those feelings freaking touch my heart when I never let that happen before on a much smaller level. You know what I'm saying? Much smaller level. I didn't let that happen, you know, to a point where, man, I'm getting all this praise and, you know what I'm saying, coming over here to freaking fight him. And I'm like, man, Getting all that praise, I realized I was a lot. I was under a lot of pressure, and mm. when I realized I was that pressure that was eating at me, and it made it made my beast come out instead of instead of me just being calm, cool, and collective, and 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 relaxing my energy. My energy was running as I was the preparation when, when I got over there. I was over there for like a month and a half before the fight so the time the time that i was over there i really started to get angry and didn't know it i really getting angry and didn't know it and it's like it's like this the best way of putting it you know let's say we have a a person that's fat a person that's fat that needs to lose weight either they can do the hard work and look good and take it off or they can go have liposuction or they can have be stress and they take it off but when you do it that way without the work it shows what how you went and had it done either man that serves you because all your fat is still hanging what are you going to do with all this fat that's hanging or it's stress and it don't look good. Your skin don't look good. It, it needs water. It needs nutrition. You need you, you look you look sick. With that being said, me going over there, I took that. It was it was a little bit of both the surgery of removing the fat and the stress that I was fighting myself. And fighting these fans because that mental stress, that that mental, was, I if I could punch one of the fans, it would have been better. It would have been better for me because yeah, but don't I would have kept you, my energy. Do you think that me. kind of threw you off though? Because, yes. be, yeah, I was gonna say because yes. yeah, that took you completely. You were so angry, you was, weren't thinking about angry. what you had to do. Okay, I was, I was angry. I was angry because I was over in a country that they didn't know me. They only saw what I've done. In, but then it was, they made it personal. Mm-hmm. They, they started making it personal and I started taking it personal. Mm-hmm. And when I started taking it personal, that's why I said I wanted to, you know, not that I wanted to, but I, I kept my composure. Yeah. I kept my composure and then let my explode, my explosion fall out like Mike Tyson. Yeah. Like Mike Tyson would do. Where if I was able to do that, then I would have been fine. But because I didn't want to be Mike Tyson and come across that that lunatic, you know, mm-hmm. not, you know, that that lunatic of a person, that nasty that you know what I'm saying, oh my God. Oh my God, who is this this I just wanted my beast to come out in the ring. Mm-hmm. 
but it came out it came out in preparation as I was getting closer and closer to the to the fight and I realized my energy my energy was zapped because it, it was it was that stress energy that I had on me mm-hmm. and when 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 people after that fight with Kawasaki when people were saying I was washed up I'm like oh my god Oh my God! You 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 have no clue. You have no clue to who I am. The only thing I had, the only I kid you not, the only thing that I had in my power is not to let him finish me, not hear that last bell. Mm-hmm. That's, that was my fight. That was my fight, and I won. But that wasn't the fight I was involved with. Mm-hmm. I was involved with a winner and a loser. Not getting through, but I've always wanted to. I was, I don't want to, it's, it's going to sound like it. And so I, I only want to leave, you know, try to leave you. Okay. But Jeff, now that, that whole situation, it sounds to me that you never really got the opportunity to tell your side of the story for whatever reason. Well, no, I know a reason I didn't tell my story because just like what I said, if I told my, if I told my truth, it would come across as I mean, listen, I didn't want to take the I didn't want to take that stage from Joe Calzaghe and what he did. He he put in his time, and and it was just it took me to come over there for him to get it, and and I and and I'm 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 appreciative to that, you know, even if he gave it to me or not, you know, but you know what I realized. Joe Joe did put his time in, and no one wants to fight him. You know, fighters from the United States didn't want to come to his country and and fight him, and and I did. I, I gave him I gave him his position in life. I mean, I gave him his position his position in the boxing life. Yeah, yeah. Because you know I mean, Joe Kazaki really people didn't really really pay the kind of attention to him until that night he fought you. So really, yes. that yeah. was his trademark fight, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, and I, I, I realized that by the by the by the motion of the crowd, you know, um, I mean, it takes it takes a fighter to bring the audience. Yeah, of course. You know, if 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 we didn't have the two fighters that's willing to engage, then the audience would be bored. Mm-hmm. So that that I mean, it takes the two fighters, and I was definitely willing to fight. What did but, Joe say to you after the fight? What did he say? I remember him saying, "Oh my God, what heart you have!" He just, you know, kept saying, "What heart?" You just kept coming. I hit you with everything, and I hit you with everything, Jeff. I hit you with everything, and I'm sitting there listening to him say that. Nothing, nothing disrespectful with what I'm saying, but he was, he was telling me. I'm, I was hitting you. I was hitting you with everything. I was hitting you with everything. And I'm sitting there scratching my head. I'm like, really? You hit me with everything? Wow. Man, I'm glad I've been really hit by some real punchers. Because mm-hmm. I didn't feel... I mean, that's the reason why I went to this. I'm not taking... I'm not saying that... Well, I'm not saying this to take credit away. I'm just telling you what everybody saw. You know, yeah. what I mean? where they was they what they was wilding about. Like, oh my God, that was a great fight. It was a great fight. He went. He kept coming forward. He kept coming forward. It, I kept coming forward because I never gave up. Mm-hmm. I'm a bull, and you will understand that from mm-hmm. being one. If I got a chance, I can. You, if you cut both of my legs off, and I can still hop. You better believe I'm still coming over there to get you. I'm going to jump to another you. one. What, what, how are you able to come back from that Joe Kalzaki defeat? Because that f- defeat made Joe, but it kind of defined you as well. Both guys, like, if you look at what Joe did, once he had that fight with you, he kind of went on. But with yourself, yeah. it was like, well, you got beat by Joe Kalzaki. So you had to kind of rebuild. How did you rebuild your career and then get the Roy Jones fight? Well, see... It's like this with with after that fight with Joe Calzaghe, Joe Calzaghe already had the tools to move on. He didn't need to add anything. See what I did was after that fight with Joe Calzaghe, 
I removed some of the tools that I felt that wasn't in my best interest. So that's what I was going to, that was one of the questions I was going to ask you too. But go ahead, complete, go ahead. So I removed, I removed people that I felt that wasn't in my best interest. Mm -hmm. And when I removed them, it made my task a little bit more difficult. It would made my task a little bit more selfish. You know, when, when boxers, is not about being selfish. It's a team effort. I I came back and I fired my promoter. I fired my manager. The people that was getting these these opportunities for me, but I was really getting them because from my performance in that ring. But at the same time, it's a business. It's a business first. Mm -hmm. And when I realized man, I took the business opportunity that was would have made it easier for me to come back. I took the harder road, which the Taurus, again, I don't mind taking that. Mm -hmm. I don't mind taking that because I'm going to take the hard road with my management promoter or not having them. I'm going to take the hard road. That's why you see that I've never shied away from fighting anybody anywhere. You get it? Yeah, I'm shot away from fighting anyone. You have the beauty of fighting Joe Kazaki and Roy Jones. Now you know they did fight. Yes. What? Who would have won had Joe Kazaki been in his prime and Roy Jones had been in his prime? Um, obviously, you fought both guys at different times of their career. But who do you think would have won? Prime for prime. We know the fight happened, but prime for prime. Well, you got to look at it this way. Rudd Jones, Rudd Jones was one of the, I mean, six-time world champion. Um, Joe Kawasaki, you know, is 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 going down as one of the best super middleweights from from that era, coming out of coming out of Europe. Um, and see, with those two titles that I just stated about the two fighters, that's the reason why we need these type of matchups. To find out in the end, when that last bell ring, we're wondering, we'll pay for it. I mean, so being that we can't see those two guys fight in that era mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. we just gotta we just gotta make we just gotta make headlines about it. That's yeah. the only thing we can do. And cool. and 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 it goes into the chat like we're doing now. Yes, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it create controversy, you know, because you're going to have some people that that's Roy Jones fight fans. You're going to have some people that's Kawasaki fans and they're mm. going to fight it out. Yeah, of course. <laughs> that's, of course. that's just the way it works. Of course. I want to mention two other super middleweights who are prominent. Maybe just look after you. Carl Froch mm -hmm. and um, Andre Ward. So if you have them all, Kawasaki, Ward, Froch, yourself, um, where do they all fit for you in the super middleweight division? That that would have been a good pool. That would have been a that that would have been a pool of fighters that that the fans would have really really loved seeing that tournament of fighting going down. Um, mm. Because one me. I'm going to give you a fight no matter what. I'm going to come forward. I'm going to I'm going to put some pressure on you and see if you know how to deal with pressure. Um with the movement, I mean, see, I think I had that aspect. I had the gift of of coming up in the era with Winky Wright. So, I had the chance to deal with boxers and and quick fighters, mm -hmm. I had the chance to you know what I'm saying I did that Winky was my first well, was one of the first guys I've, I I used to spar with at the age of seven just playing around in the gym, you know um, he was 16 I was I was seven and and um, it was it was it was um uh, that's when I realized I wanted to I wanted to be a puncher because Winky moved so much. And if I can get him to stand in one place just a little bit too long, I could catch him. And that's where I developed the punch because Winky was a mover. 
Mm. I'm like, man, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta slow him down. I gotta, I gotta step on his feet. I gotta do something to keep him <laughs> in spot so I can let, so I can let this hook go. Of course. <laughs> of course. Um, like, there, there's another question I always wanted to ask you. It was regarding yeah. the Roy Jones fight when Roy Jones called himself Captain Left Hook or Captain yeah. Hook, and you were Left Hook. Can yeah. you tell me about that? Was that all tongue in cheek or what? Listen, <laughs> if I'm I'm gonna say this. Listen, I'm gonna be real. Roy Jones, Roy Jones took the fight at a perfect time, and this is why. I had just come off my tearing my rotator cuff. I brought Roy Jones back. I brought Roy Jones down to a, to a fight here that I put on for my first fight coming back after the injury. He came because I wanted to fight him next. He came down and he saw, he, I mean, he saw that I was, you know, I tore 97% of my subscap and it was, it was brutal. I mean, for me looking at it, I mean, me understanding how long it took for it to come back. I went to the best rotator cuff surgeon, Dr. Andrews out in Alabama who does baseball players. Mm -hmm. right. And basically he told me, he was like, Jeff, this is one thing I want you to understand. Something that you've been developing ever since you've been a child. You cannot go lift weights to get the strength back in tendons. Tendons get strength. Is tendons are like a rubber band, he said. You can't put weights to it and, and expect it to build muscle and get stronger. Mm. You can't. You can't do that to tendons. Tennis gets strong from over a period of time from birth to your normal movement that you've been doing all your life. You have a chance of coming back, but it's going to take a lot. It's not going to be a muscle that you're going to see that you don't see right now. And then you work at it, you work at it, you start to see it pop out of your freaking skin. It's not like that. It's going to be something that's going to take time. Most baseball players I work on, professional baseball players, tear it and their career is over. Mm. And when he said that, I said, ah, he's the devil. <laughs> I'm the devil trying to tell me I ain't going to fight again. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, ah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight again. But seriously, after going through that and that therapy, I realized I couldn't lift. I knew what I used to lift. I couldn't lift five pounds. I couldn't lift five pounds and without without support of 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 the therapist. Mm. I could not freaking believe it. I could not believe it. But the doctor told me, he said, Jeff, I put this thing back together so tight. We can go into World War Three and your body get hit with it all. <laughs> the last thing it's gonna tear is this, this, this bite, this, this shoulder, this tendon, these tendons in your shoulder. And I was like, man, I realized later why he said that, because he didn't want me to worry about throwing it. Because if I worried about throwing it, I wouldn't have been really reaching a little deeper. So he <laughs> wanted to let me know by Jeff, I really tighten it down. So by him, but he didn't, what he didn't tell me, by him telling me he tightened it down, he didn't realize he tightened it down so much to where it's going to take a lot of freaking time for me to get it to get unstiff. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. You see, I have to get it loose and limber. And it, 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 we, we've been, ever since we've been born, we're not, we, we're not born with, with man's strength. We're born with child strength, so we work with it. We're not strong. I mean, man, you become a man. You ever hear someone say that? Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. become a man. Yeah, you become a man. He he, he walk broad. He he's different. Mm -hmm. That that's the things that I had to at the age of 20, 20, 24, 25 that I did it. I had to try to get it all back in the twenty five years that I've been living. 
and working at it. I had to try to get it back within, you know, six months, not happening. Eight months, not happening. A year, not happening. Two years, not happening. Five years, I'm starting to feel something. And, and but most because I was still fighting and didn't have that support system around me saying, Jeff, I care for you, man. Don't don't go in there. Don't yeah. ruin your, don't ruin your career. But you know what took me? You know what carried me? My my persistence and and desire to to do what I love to do and not lay down with what I love to do when mm. I had the ability to lay down, but my my mental my mental was saying, "No, we ain't laying down. You crazy? Mm-hmm. You crazy? They don't have to freaking cut my legs off to lay down. I'm not laying down." Okay, fair enough. So, okay, I heard a story. Uh, something about Jeff Lacey fighting again. Is this true? Yes. yes. Um, this is the reason why. Just like I was saying about you don't see you don't see that throwback fighters the fans want to see. The fans the fans need to, I mean the, the fans But you don't need have to, the fans, Jeff. Yes. You don't have the type of fans nowadays that you did when the fighters were fighting back in the seventies and the eighties. Well, you uh, no, I mean you people like us, yes, it's different. Yeah. Now we yeah. have I think the fighting world had dictates to the casual fan more than it does the hardcore fan. I mean, that's just my opinion. No, you know what? You know what it is? I'm sorry to say this, but you you've been brainwashed by what you're seeing because as I'm as I was going to say is boxing. I came and watched boxing because you watch it. You've been brainwashed to say and understand what you're saying now. Because when I fight, I change people's opinion. I would change your opinion about what you just said. No, but that's but you will but see you you will see my blood, sweat, and tears in that ring. Okay, the mistake I made. Okay. The mistake I made in that statement was I didn't mean all fighters. I mean there are some fighters nowadays who <clears throat> they do not use the tools that the old older fighters use. Whereas if they did, I think that. I think that the casual fans and not all of them, and I'm not talking about, I'm not, no, seriously. I'm just talking about some casual fans. Uh, they, they don't look at the science of the sport is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> they're looking at, they're looking at who has the most power, who's knocked out the most people. You know. why, why are you laughing? <laughs> because, because, you put it into your own words <laughs> of why I don't watch. It's, it's difficult for me to watch boxing now. Because of that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> because of what you're, and that's what, and, 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 and now I'm going to say this. You just spoke, you just spoke about what you love watching in me. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna change. I, you know what? I realize. I realize God's gift to me is being able to connect with what you just said. Mm-hmm. Being able to connect with what you like. Mm-hmm. That's why. That's why. I feel. I want to go back into that ring mm-hmm. because because these fans are being just like what you said. You're being manipulated. Mm-hmm. You're they being really, manipulated. I mean, they, they really are being manipulated because I, you know, I look at some of the comments and they they want to put two people or who are in two totally different weight classes together. Uh, yeah. I don't think 
I don't think that they, and like I said, I'm not talking about all fighters, but when you, when you see that, and I can understand what you're saying by not watching boxing because of that. It's the frustration of you listening to a commentator, <laughs> all the praise to a fighter, God. When you know that that fighter has not actually deserved that praise. I mean, I know it from being there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I just, I don't, the reason why I don't like watching it, because I'm not going to, I'm not going to listen to a commentator that's, that hasn't been in there and they trying to create the controversy. Right. Right. They're, they're, I mean, this is, I mean, the, the, the uh, they don't you know, want to hear you know me talk. Fix that Listen, is what I do. I hit the mute button. I hit the mute button. They don't want to hear me talk. <laughs> this is the reason why, because I'm gonna I'm gonna be truthful. I know, and you should that's be. The only way that's the only way I know it. I'm not. Yeah. Going, I'm not, and and I'm not trying to talk down or bad about these up and coming fighters. Right. But right. I'm sorry, but um, these. I didn't pass my torch. I didn't pass my torch. My torch stayed right here. And basically they want me to retire with my torch. And that's why you seeing what you seeing on television. Because when I, when I came through, when I came into boxing, I took the torch from the, the, the former world champion. Mm -hmm. And they gave me, they gave me praise and saying, man, this kid is going to be freaking tough to deal with. Mm hmm now these fighters that's coming they're being manipulated and and they're being they're being the, the you 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 you, who, you who, being me? brainwashed me? i'm being brainwashed <laughs> who me that's what that i heard is... that's what i heard come out your mouth no 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 i'm being brainwashed yes i'm, not, I'm yes. Listen, yes. I'm telling you. Do you still? Uh, I, I know. I, are you still able to throw that left hook in the way that you 100%. want? You know, after this, I told you about the injury, and it took some time yes. to come back. Has it healed now? Then it it has healed, and not only that, God has did something much greater. If you look at, I mean, you see, you see, you see this. You see my arm right here. Yes. You see how my bicep is not connected. I'm yep. gonna show you my other arm. Oh you yeah. How, you see, see on this one, my bicep is not that muscle that comes to connect is not is not there. Yeah. The tendon. But see, mm -hmm. look on my look on my right. Look on my right. You see it. You okay. see yeah. this part. This part right there that's falling down. That's falling down the middle. Right. That's still connected. This one isn't. I realized. I realized after injuring, after tearing this, I had one, one or two things to deal with. I went through a shoulder injury before, and I'm like, man, I don't know if I want to deal. I'm thinking it might be the same thing as tendons. It might be the same thing again. I, I don't want to. I'm, I'm gonna just. It, it don't hurt. I'm gonna see if I can still fight. I, I still feel comfortable with throwing it. Yeah. So I went into the gym and I started knocking bags down. And I realized, man, why did God connect this? Why did God connect these tenants? Because I'm I'm hooking harder than I ever did before. But I I think I I think it's been from me giving my giving the attention on my rotator cuff when I when I did that in 20, 2007 on yeah. my left shoulder, it's it's finally come to par, and it's 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 me working at a, at an adult age to get the strength back, opposed to it being a child. Me, you know, what I'm saying not really focus on it, just the regular movement. Now I'm an adult and I worked it back. And with this, with, with, with my tenant being still off, it's yep. allowing me, it's allowing me to hook much harder. Ooh. That's why, that's why I'm eager 
to so, come back. So let, let's cut to the chase. Yes. When are we going to see that left hook again? Man, we're working on it. It, it, it might be, it, well, the fight we're working on, we're waiting for the promoter to uh, sign a date. Um, it'll be over in the UK. Okay, and uh, do you, you don't know what day that will be or date will be? You not know? yet. Not as soon, as soon as I know, I'll let you know. I know I know. you were saying the potentially the opponent could be Tony Oki. Yes. It, I got some unfinished business because of that. Right. Well, Tony Oki is down the road for me. Just down, well, look down the road about an hour yeah. or so away for me. So yeah. uh, when you come to the UK, you'll have to come in and stop for a cup of tea. Most definitely. Most definitely. I won't have some tea, but I'll have a cup or something. <laughs> a cup of something. I don't know about the. I don't know if I want to fall into the tea. <laughs> Y'all like to have the hot tea and stir it with the little bags and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know about. I like my hot chocolate, to be honest. Yeah, but I'm yeah, gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I, I'll watch you drink the hot tea, and you know, I'll drink, I'll drink a water or something. We can still have, we can still kick back and laugh. <laughs> well, if you come, if you come before the before the winter, then uh, hey, we've got the sea. I'm right next door to the sea, so you can see the lovely seafront as well. All right, awesome. Awesome. I look forward now, to it. Now, let's talk before you go, because uh, yeah. this is a round for round interview. You've got to talk round for round. Tell us about round for oh, round, but how you got involved with it and what you think of it so far. Oh, my God. Um, I got contacted and, you know, I was on the, I was on the EA Sports game. Um, I was on that and, and I, 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 I couldn't believe it. It, it it was it was a feeling of man. I finally made it. Like wow, I'm on a freaking game, and uh -huh. it was it, it was the most exciting thing to hear my friends and people that didn't you know that 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 was just fans. Like man, Jeff, I love you on that game. I fight with you in that game. I'm like oh my god. It, it was it was just a change of it. It just really let me. It really let me feel the pure. Love that my fans have for me. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, that's the best. I mean, it's it's one thing going into that gym and, and freaking working out a skill, working out a skill, working out a skill, and you never get it developed to a point where no one recognizes you for it. And that is that is the blessing that God has given me with 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 you know even now, even now. I mean, it, it working. You know, what I'm saying working with. Round for round. I mean, this is. I mean, it's it's gonna it's it's gonna be awesome. I mean, these fans and and what I'm hearing, what I'm hearing, there isn't no boxing games, you know, that's to this quality. There is no, no boxing games out right now. They, they're dying say, to see. They're dying for a boxing game. The graphics are off the chain. Absolutely yes. off the chain. We saw. I saw a picture of one of the fighters. I can't say who the fighter is, but the, uh -huh. the graphics. Are off the chain. I tell you, Jeff, you see the graphics on this game. It looks amazing. So we're going to shortly be releasing um, just the beginning of maybe some motion and, and maybe you'll yeah. see one of the boxes oh, moving. Man. That's going to be so, I, I know everybody's waiting for it. They're dying. They're, they're reaching out to me like, man, when is it going to be out? <laughs> when is it going to be out? Give oh, me a while, yeah, because it's still developing it. But the guys at Round for Round are doing a, a brilliant job, and we're glad to be, you know, obviously the official channel for it. But you know, I said it's amazing. Um, one other question before you disappear, yes. Jeff. Um, physical body. I always wanted to know whether you lifted weights or that was just lots of press ups and sit ups. No, no. <laughs> Lifting weights to a boxer is like having kryptonite. Okay. Because I mean, you, I mean, it's the small muscle for boxers. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, Focus. Very, you're always physically very big, muscular. Yeah, but you, you, what I did was, most people go out and get the get the big to get the big muscle to be able to fight with the big muscle. You have to also add the small muscle, the small muscle fight for me with my big muscle. I don't, I don't tighten up. You know what I'm saying? I'm relaxed. 
see that big muscle get you to get tight and you know what I'm saying you then you start pushing that and there's nothing to support it because you didn't work on the small muscle to support right. it. And that's the reason why big muscles don't work in boxing because mm-hmm. it's it's all about the longevity. It's the long lasting it's a long lasting, long stretched and, and energized muscle that's that's willing to like the runner. You know, you have to have that runner muscle to run long distance to fight. A runner can come into the to the gym and they can they can they can do it, but then when they have to dig down deep and, and get into the big muscle, you only have to yeah. work the big muscle a little bit, but that small muscle has to be up and going. The only yeah. muscles I, I think that you really work when you're running, because I used to run uh, uh-huh. uh, religiously. It was like a drug to me. I had to run. Yeah. And it builds your legs. Mm-hmm. That's the one thing that it does do. It builds your legs, your calves and and things like that. But go ahead. And uh, not only does it build your legs, it builds your mental. It Strength. does. It, this is this is what it does to the mental when you know it becomes it becomes an addiction actually is yes. what it does it yes. becomes an addiction yes. like if yes. i couldn't run i would i would go out and run eight nine o'clock at night if yes. i got off work late i had to run it was yes. just something i had to do yeah it because it takes a lot of uh the stress aerobic and you've accomplished something that a lot of people can't do yeah. I remember I, I ran every day. Sometimes I run twice a day. Well, and and my husband got out there one time and tried to run and he collapsed. Yeah. Block away from the house. He said, because huh. I was running heels. I wasn't just running straight flat. I was running heels. And yeah. I yeah, told him, I said, it's not as easy as it looks. It's, it's really hard. You have to build that stamina. It's the, cons- I mean, see, it's the consistency in running. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of people run to think they have to get themselves tired to get in gre- better shape. No, it's just, it's just, I mean, I, this is what, when I used to see Muhammad Ali run, I'm like, man, how come he's not running fast? He, he's not, he's not getting his heart rate up. How come he's not running fast? See, with running, it's the distance. You run for distance. You run for time. You don't run for, for, for strength. Right. You, you, you run for, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's. It's it's set points. It's it's oh, I'm gonna run. I'm gonna you run have to pace run. yourself. Yes, it's the it's the distance. Yourself. It's the distance, and that, that I never really understood. Young, I'm like, man, how come they're not running fast to get tired? I'm like, man, how you get in shape if you're not getting tired? How come you? How, it's just that small muscle. Mm-hmm. You're getting that small muscle in in shape. The big muscle is when you're in the gym. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're working on that muscle for the aerobic. But the, the 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 biggest aerobic you need is the running, that mm-hmm. running aerobic. That's that's what's gonna keep you out there, keep you out there going round after round, round after round, round after round. You work on that big muscle, you only can work on it. That's why I saw in Mike Tyson, you know, he, he only he only worked, you know, what I'm saying he only worked on the bag with speed and and power. Mm-hmm. He didn't he didn't just work with aerobic. He didn't he, everything was power. Everything mm-hmm. was power. He should have just been going through the motion for time. You know what I'm saying? Instead of hitting it for 15 minutes as hard as you can, hit it for 30 minutes, but not as hard as you can. Hit it for uh, longevity. Uh-huh. And then the aerobic, put the aerobic in the body. And that's what a lot of these, that I learned that from, from, from working out at a young age. And I realized, man, I don't get tired. I don't get tired. No, you don't. Not, not You really don't. You no. could, you, I, you know, you could, you could keep going, but yes. you know, that's uh, and it, it's a gradual build. That's why I tell people yep. you're not going to get out there and run four miles in one day, no. not even a week. It's going to take a while to get there. As you know, once you mentally get them four miles down, mm-hmm. you physically, physically get the four miles down in your mind. Then it, then it gets easier. It much easier. It, it it gets it gets easier once you get the four miles down in your head. Seriously, if you can run four, you can run ten. But mm-hmm. only you got to work on the muscle. It's the muscle that's different. It's the right. consistency of the muscle. Is the is the aerobic in the muscle? How long you gonna work that muscle? Now it's the time that you have to put into it. And that's what I realized about boxing. 
a lot of people was trying to freaking put me in the category of Mike Tyson. And I'm like, my muscle is different than Mike, Mike, Mike Tyson's. My muscle, I never my thought muscle. of you in the same category as Mike Tyson ever. Yeah, but see, oh, this I, know, is... I, know, I know you didn't, but the, the, the mainstream media did that and, and kind of boxed uh, Jeff in. So when he, by the time he got to the Kawasaki fight, people were expecting Mike Tyson. So that's why he, his career was kind of like, once he started knocking people out, that's what people said about him, even if it wasn't mm. true. Yeah. A lot, repeated enough times, becomes a truth in its own self. Especially I will tell with... you this. I will tell you this. I didn't get it mixed up. Exactly. The fans got it mixed up. Right. Absolutely. I never got it mixed up. Well, that was the, the fans media. got it mixed up, and, and because I didn't deliver, because I didn't yeah. deliver what they was looking to deliver. Yeah. That's why. They, oh, he wasn't. Uh, he wasn't this, and he wasn't that. You know. But Jeff, that's the same thing today. Yeah. It's, it's the same worse. thing. It's worse today. I know. That's it's what. Today. Yeah. Exactly. It's worse today simply because you've got social media. Social media is what's made it worse today. But see, yeah. You know what? Yeah. You know what? But you, now having social media can work for you in a good way. Of course like it can. It did for me. See, you have to be when when. When you a real fighter, mm -hmm. social media will work better for you. Of course, it's when but you can't. If you, if you, I mean, if you like some of these people that's on social media, come on there and freaking post something that they have just for a couple hours and say it's theirs for life. <laughs> then that's where it's gonna work <laughs> against you. Of course, absolutely, Jeff. Um, in closing, how yes. do people contact Jeff Lacey? Um, how do people contact you if they want to talk to you? And and a final word about round for round boxing. Um, they can connect me through uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, Jeff Left Hook Lacey on both. Um, my wife wouldn't like if I gave you my number. Only you guys get to have. No, that. No, 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 hell no, hell no, hell no, 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 overly excited because they've been waiting for a game to play. Um, the last game that they was playing was um, a fight night. And, you know what I'm saying, yep. they lost a lot of their accounts. I wasn't – I mean, they lost a lot of their accounts, but um, a lot of guys didn't come back. Uh, that's another story for me. Um, but I'm glad – I'm glad you guys came around because um, – I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the actual, I'm, the, I, I am the person that, that you see here talking that's going to be, you know, uh, giving it all in, you know? Uh, so, cheeky question. Going to have to ask a very cheeky question before I go, uh, before you go. Because we all know that you are affiliated with uh, Keith Thurman in one yes. way or another, was in the gym. Now, people want to know, uh, is Keith Thurman going to come back? When he comes back, will he face Errol, the truth, Spence? And what's your thoughts on all of that? You know, one thing I know about Keith. Keith is not afraid. So that's the first thing I want to say. He ain't afraid to don't, tell me. Don't, don't, don't get, don't get him not taking the fight or the fight not happening. The fact that he may not want the fight. I realized in boxing through my career, mainly Joe Calzaghe, timing is everything. And when you have a good support system, the fans are going to get what they're going to get, but it's not always when they want to get it. Right. You have to understand that because these fans, these fans are viewers. They, yeah. they want to see... They want to see the next best fight. The next best fight. They want to. They want to mentally and physically put two fighters together, and we want to see this fight. But the fans are not in the position of going through the tug of war, the mentals, the teams, and all of that. They're not in. They're not in it. They just want to see it. 
Right. Sell it. Exactly. Sell it. Sell it. Mm -hmm. Sell it. See it. Let's let's watch this next fight. And we want to get that next. But you know what? I'm gonna say this, and you'll be able to understand it from we all have kids, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. My kids are seven years old. Eight well, just turned eight years old. Um if my kids came to me today and said, Dad, I want to fight. I'll say, no, son, you're not ready. And that's from my father's point of view, saying, my son is not, I don't want my son doing that yet. I want him to understand, you know what I'm saying? I want him to understand him a little bit more mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. And I say that because I was seven when I first started. And I remember my dad telling me no. I remember my dad telling me no. No, you're too small. And I'm like, Dad, Dad, you fought. How come I can't fight? What's wrong with me fighting? You fought. And as a kid, I wasn't looking at it from, you know what I'm saying, me being too small. Because I knew I was strong. Me being a middle child, I had to I had to fight with my older brothers and my small Yeah, but he'd already been through it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So so I realized and I'm looking at my kids and they're 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 seven and eight and I'm like, oh my God. If my kids came over to me to ask me to fight, I'd be like, oh I'll I'll be mimicking my dad. But what I did was I found a gym about two miles away from the house on my school bus. So I started walking down there to freaking going and looking in the looking in the window. After a while I was boxing within the next in the next two weeks to three weeks that I was coming, showing up there every day. I mm. became the, the 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 gym mascot. Everybody walked in and said, hey, yeah. <laughs> and that's how I started fighting. I started fighting. That's 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 the real that's the real truth. That's yeah. how I got into boxing. That's really well, let me ask you a question. Now this is something because yeah. I've interviewed some of the young boxers, kids coming up with their dads. Mm -hmm. And uh did it ever get to a point when you were in your preteens or you got to those teens and you boxing kind of went was the second? Um, well, not your second, but it wasn't as important as prior to those years. Did you? I'm glad did you, you said that? that. Huh? I'm glad. You, I'm glad you said that because a lot of my friends, when I made that Olympic team in 2000, well, mm -hmm. when I made. I fall here in Tampa, I, and when I made it, uh, when I made that, when I made that team in 1999, when I was finally official, I, mean, I was I made the team. Mm -hmm. I realized how a lot of my friends that saw me when I first started, and that started with you know that fault that that box with me, and they quit and they went on and did other things. Mm -hmm. But I kept the passion of what I realized I fell in love with, the passion. Mm -hmm. I was passionate about boxing. Mm -hmm. And because of my passion came through, I, I didn't want to choose anything else. I was, yeah. um, I ran a 4-1 in the, in, well, I ran a 4-1 in the 40. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, 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 I had a, I had a, a track, a, a Olympic track star that was training me during my boxing career. Oh, and wow. He, work, work, and he, he clocked me at a 4-1. He was like, oh, my God, Jeff, you run like a – man, you could be in the Olympics running that fast. Mm -hmm. And my dad was a runner. And I was like, wow. But nah, I'd rather choose boxing because it's it's one-on-one. -on -one. I never did like the team sports, and I wanted that one-on-ones. That, I didn't feel like that, that attention was going to give me what I wanted out of running. So you didn't have any kind of peer that you you ignored that peer pressure that some fighters yeah. run into, and also, as, huh? Go ahead. As a as a bull, you will understand that <laughs> no one's gonna never get us to do something that we don't already have our minds. Focused I know, on. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I don't That's know. True. I'm doing this. Okay, Jeff. Yeah. We, yeah running out of time but yeah. once again we want to thank you so much thank for you of uh, round for round boxing we appreciate you and everything and you have please to please keep us in touch with when your fight's coming up most definitely most definitely i will okay. sure i'll do that okay
Ladies right. and gentlemen, right. once again, the great Jeff Lacey. Thank you so much, Jeff. Peace out. Thank you, Jeff. Have a good one. You Take too. Bye-bye. So that's it. We've got an extended interview with Jeff Left at Lacey. I'd like to thank you for being co-host and doing a fantastic job. Thank you, Adrian. You're welcome. I enjoyed and it. We'll be back shortly with another round for round special. See you soon. Take oh. care.